Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Chris Mackey and this is your third um, getting started with Ladybug tutorial in, in, in this series. Um, and if you guys remember in, in the last one, um, which, which you, the last file, which you can also download in the link below, we worked with the, the 3D chart, a colored chart, to, to visualize data for, for a whole year. And this, this, uh, this time we're going to, well, a lot of this might end up being a bit of a review because a lot of the, the things like a conditional statement you'll see coming back again. Um, but we're going to use it for a different component so that you begin to get a sense of how, how this works across Ladybug. And we're going to specifically do this for an awesome component called the, the Sunplot. Um, and uh, and so so I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna first turn off the preview on the uh, on the the 3D chart that we used previously. And I'm just gonna click on it and and hit enable. Oh, actually, well, I could have I could have enabled it or turned off the preview, but this this just you know disabled the whole component. Um, so we'll do that for the time being. Um, you know, and takes it out of our Rhino scene for us. Um, and and so I want you guys and maybe actually you know we'll, we'll move all this kind of over to this to the side. Maybe I'll just drop it down below and, and sort of continue to work here uh, for, for this tutorial. Um, and, so, and so we'll start essentially by dropping a sun, sun plot component onto the canvas. And you can see the sun, the sun plot is this component, this little yellow sphere with a kind of red circle going across it, a red arc. Um, and I'm just going to drag and drop this ladybug sun path onto the canvas. And you see, it's a it's a fairly large component, um, and that is comparable to to all the things that you can do with it, um, and all the options that you have for for customizing it. Um, but really, you'll you'll actually see. So there's a convention used in Ladybug for required inputs, um, where if the dash is before the 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 required, you know, that means that it's required, and if the dash is after, or if the dash is on both sides, that means it's it's not required. And the difference between the the dash on on the um, on the the other side means that it's like it's very optional. You really don't have to usually probably worry about it too much. And the and the double lot one means that it's recommended that you put in something uh, or or that maybe you start experimenting with those first. So you'll see that the only thing that we really need on this sun on the sun path in order to get it to work is the location. And that location is the same data that came in with the import EPW component. Um, you know that we brought weather weather data in before. And if you look inside this, I mean, if I, I can draw up a panel here, so you guys can see actually what the location is. And it's it's a relatively short thing. It just has info on the latitude, longitude, and time zone. Um, and actually, and this is something that even if you know if you didn't have a weather file, but you knew the latitude and longitude, you could actually create your own uh, your own location in order to use in the in the sun path, and that you would do with this this ladybug construct location. But we're we're not going to do that this time because we have a weather file already here for us. Um, so so I'm just going to take the location uh, out from the import EBW, hook it up to the sun plot. And then you should see within a few seconds that in your Rhino scene you will get a a sun path that plotted. And it might I mean it might not show up at first, and you may have to zoom out because it's it's sort of it's sort of made in order to uh, um, to to be very large and go around whatever geometry for buildings you might have in there. Um, so I mean this is top view, but if I double click here and then double click again on perspective, uh, we can see that this is actually this is a 3D 3D sun plot. Um, and uh, and so it really kind of gives a sense if we have you know geometry that's encircled with this a sense of, of how the sun uh, relates to relates to the to our, our building um, and so I mean and now all right we can start to play with uh, well I guess I should show you like a lot of the same principles that you guys experimented with in the in the the 3D color chart in the last video apply to to the to the sun plot. So for example, well, all right, I'm just going to delete this this panel here for a second. But for example, we could we could bake this geometry. Um, so you know, by right clicking and going to bake, and then selecting the layer that we want, we can we can bake the whole sun plot on into into Rhino, and then we have this geometry that can then be exported to other programs like Illustrator and stuff to to do line weights and other things. So that's that's one set of things that we can do. I'm going to just delete the Rhino geometry so that we're just looking at it in 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 Grasshopper now with the Grasshopper's display. And you know, and just like the 3D chart, we can change that red color, that that you know, that default Grasshopper red color to to say something like black by uh, by pulling up a preview, a custom preview component. 
Um, you know, also, and before I go too much more into the sunblot, I should say, so Mustafa, who is the, the wonderful person who started this, uh, the, the Ladybug and Honeybee open source project, uh, he has three very awesome, long, good tutorial videos on the sunplot already. And I'm just going to do a very basic overview for, for people who are just getting into Grasshopper or, and, and, and Ladybug. Just because it's a very good way to get a sense of some of the conventions. Um, uh, that, you know, and, and there's a lot more that you can do with it that I'm going to cover in this video. So just keep that in mind. I posted, I, I'll post Mustafa's uh, uh, three tutorial videos in the description here if you want to go more beyond this. Um, but for now, we're just going to do some simple things like okay let's make this make the, the the curves black so I'm gonna hook up the Sun path curves to the preview component and I'll hook up the legend uh, let's say and then I need to pull up a swatch in order to change it from this crazy hot pink color um, and let's say we'll make the swatch black by dropping down the value and hooking it up there and so yeah so now we've got we've got something that we can you know even take a print screen of for example and and you know just just send over to to uh, you know, a, a client or, or a fellow designer very quickly just to, you know, let them know where the sun position is in relation to to uh, to the building. So, but now, but there's other things that we can do. So you see by default, the sun is in position of the winter solstice here at noon uh, in, in particular. So it's, it's at the lowest in the sky that it is for any noon period. And you can actually get a sense these curved, like curvy, swoopy lines are actually represent the hours of each year. So this is like 11 a.m., this is this is 12 noon, this is 1, 1 p.m. And so I mean, so that's that's exactly what those those arrows are marking out, those, uh, sorry, those lines are marking out there. So we can move the sun around. Let's say we don't want to look at it in December on the winter solstice. Um, let's say maybe we want, uh, well, first let's make a slider that goes through all the months of the year. And there's a shortcut, there's an easy way to do that if you just start typing numbers. And so the grasshopper convention for this, if we want to make a slider going from 0 to 12, is to first type 0, and then we do a less than sign, and then we just type the number 12, and then finally hit enter. And that will automatically make a slider that goes between 0 and 12, between all of our months of the year. And we can see now hooking this up to the month import, in, in, like uh, input of the, the sun plot. So for example, we just set it to three and hook it up there. It's going to move the sun into the position of, of where it is in March. And you know, we can begin to scroll through. I mean, my computer is a little slow. It might be faster on yours. Um, but you can scroll through the months of the year and get a sense, you know, move that the sun around in that, in that sense. Um, and you know, we could also, let's say, make a, well, make another one that goes from uh, 0 to 24 using that same convention that I just showed you guys. And we can scroll through the different hours of the day as well. Um, you know, keeping the, the sun in all these, these, uh, these interesting positions. And you can see, so we're getting this sort of visualization out, you know, as, as we do this. Um, but also importantly, it, it'd be important to know we get a lot of things out of this component. Um, a very important one being the, the sun vectors. So if you pull up a panel and see what the, what the sun vectors are here. And I mean, this isn't maybe so, so important for us to immediate, like immediately right now, but it's something that's used in a lot of the other components, especially a number of these shading and, and ray tracing components that you may be interested in working with later. Um, and so, so you can use this to, to do to, for, for those types of components, and this is meant to be a kind of a starting point for that. Um, but you can see the sun vector, it's just an XYZ value for the direction of the sun at that time. Um, so, so that's an important thing to note. Um, now again, I mean, a lot of the things that you recognized before, well, actually, okay, well, before, before launching too much into, into the, some of the things that you might recognize before, I like the conditional statement on this thing. Um, let's say you want to make a, a sun plot for every single hour of the year. Um, instead of just a single sun as you see a position here. And that you can do if you have a, an analysis period here. Essentially, if you put an analysis period in for that. And so to do that, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first start by just deleting these, these sliders for right now. Um, uh, because, you know, we're not necessarily interested in looking at a single hour of the year. And in order to set an analysis period, you can use this ladybug analysis period component that's in, in the, the tab, the analyze weather data tab. So if you just drag and drop that analysis period component onto the canvas, um, you'll see this, this allows you to set essentially a, t a period of from a certain month, day, hour, to a certain month, day, hour. And you'll see by default, if I pull up a panel here, 
I mean, what's, what's it coming out of this thing is nothing more than a, I mean, if you guys know anything of Python, it's a, some tuple values that say, okay, January 1st at, at uh, you know, the first, uh, let's see, on the first day at the first hour, you know, that's our start period and go until December 31st, uh, you know, at, at the 24th hour. And so you can change some of these things to, you know, say be just for month, two months six or something. I mean, I don't know, I could do that just to, to show you guys how that works quickly. But, you know, you see it changes that that uh, uh, analysis period there. But I think for this one, let's, let's you know, we want to make it for the whole year. Um, so let's just take this default whole year analysis period and plug it into the analysis period of the sun pad. And then you'll see it'll take a little bit of time because it's going to now essentially calculate that and generate a sun for every single hour of the year. Um, and it's going to fill, fill up all these, these lines with little yellow suns. Um, and, uh, and so I know, I know it might, might not seem like it's actually, I mean, if they're all yellow, as you're going to see in a second, that might not seem like it's really telling you much more information. But there's a very important thing that we're going to do with that, that, uh, that condition in a second. Um, uh, that, that I think you guys will be very happy about. Um, so let's see. All right, so you see we get those yellow suns for every hour, and my display accidentally closed the, uh, the, the Rhino interface there. Okay, brought it back. Or sorry, the Grasshopper interface. Uh, and so, all right, so we're getting yellow suns for every hour of the year, um, you know, but also, but we're getting sun vectors for every hour of the year. And so you can, you know, maybe... This is a hint that maybe some other things you could do with it later down the line. You also get all the sun up hours of the year, which is, you know, HOY stands for hours of year. So, so yeah, so you can maybe start to use that to select out certain types of data. But, I mean, the, the real power of actually of ha hooking up an analysis period like this is that we can then actually hook up, say, any of these inputs that we get in here and like, and to, to this annual hourly data input. And what that will do, I'll, well, I'll just, I'll just connect it right now. Let's say we'll take the air temperature and we'll hook it up to the annual hourly data of the sun path. And you'll see what, what will happen is that it will color each one of these, these yellow suns with the temperature for that hour of the year. And this then will allow you to see certain things like, you know, what, what are the, the time periods when it's very hot outside? What is the sun position of that? And then you can, you know, start to think, all right, well, those, these are the, you know, those hot conditions are the suns that I really have to shade. Um, and so, so, I mean, you could start to imagine using it that way. Um, and I'm just going to fast forward for a second because my computer is so slow coloring these suns. Oh well, actually, it's it's not so slow. I didn't need to fast forward. It was it was it was right there, um, and hopefully it was faster on your machine. But now you're getting yes, you're getting colored suns, and you're getting a temperature scale for those colored suns, where the hottest sun is is you know around 36, um, the the coldest sun is around 12. Um, and so, all right, so yeah, you can get a sense of exactly what I was telling you about. But of course, well, you know, what would be really awesome is if we could, you know, use a color scale like we did for the, for the 3D chart or the color 3D chart, where we, you know, essentially colored it with temperatures that were too hot or too cold, you know, for, or, you know, for the comfort conditions of people, instead of this arbitrary scale that was determined by the limits of the data. And we can do that very easily with, with the legend parameters that we've already set up for the 3D chart. So, you know, you can imagine this could be really useful for coordinating a set of graphics. So I'm just going to pull this up here, and we don't really need that panel there. That was just to, you know, to display the colors. But if we take our legend bar then for our 3D chart that, you know, colored the sun from 12 to 26 with those custom colors and plug them into the legend bar of the sun path, you should see, again, it's going to take a few seconds, but it's going to color those suns with the same exact criteria that we had colored our 3D chart with earlier um, in, in, the, in the last video. And so I'm just, I'll fast forward until, until this finishes. Okay, and there you have it. That, there are your colored suns, where red is, is signifying temperatures that are too hot for most people, where you're definitely going to want shade. And the blue is, is denoting conditions where, I mean, below 12, you're probably 12 degrees Celsius, you're probably really going to want, want shade a lot. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so, I mean, you could use this to really start making meaningful graphics of, like, of the, the, you know, the suns that are important to shade. Uh, but now let's say, I mean, I mentioned the conditional statement again here, I mean, as, as an important part of, um, of, of, of the sun path. And, and again, we can, we can hook in a conditional statement here to, to make a custom sun path. But before I do that, I wanted to kind of show you guys that, I mean, just like the 3D chart, you can hook up multiple types of annual hourly data. 
Um, and you know what, I'm just going to move the sun path up so you can see exactly everything that's connected here. So if we want to also connect like relative humidity and make a conditional statement based on temperature and humidity, just as we did with the 3D chart, we can do that for the sun path. And so I'm going to do that first by, well, I'm, I'm going to disable the component because I don't want it to recalculate each time I make a change to it. So I'm just going to right click on it and hit enable and that's going to temporarily disable it. And I'm going to disconnect, right click on the legend par and disconnect it uh, because we don't necessarily want the humidity to be colored with the, the, the same scale. And I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to hold down shift after, after starting to drag out the relative humidity and connect that up to the annually hour, annual hourly data as well. And then, you know, well, let's see, we'll, we'll, let's, let's write out a conditional statement so that we'll do this all at once so that, it, you know, we don't have to re have this, the sun path recalculate each time. But, uh, but let's bring up a panel by first hitting quotation marks. And so in this case, our conditional statement, it's, it's not going to be exactly the same as we had last time because we had three variables hooked up. We had also hooked up wind speed. So in this, in this case, the first one we hooked up was temperature. And so we're going to start off by saying A is, uh, is greater than 12. So we'll look at just the conditions where, where the, the, dr the dry bulb temperature is greater than 12. Uh, and the conditions where the humidity is greater than 50. And for that, we'll say B, which is the second variable, is greater than 50. And then we'll hit Enter and have a panel with our conditional statement in there. And then we'll just connect that to the sun path. And then we're ready, we're ready to run this thing. So all we have to do to, to run it is just to re-enable it by, by hitting, uh, hitting enable again, right clicking and hitting enable. And this, is, this will take some time to calculate, but you'll see we'll get two sun paths out of this actually this time because we hooked up two streams of annual hourly data. Um, and I'm gonna fast forward so that you guys don't have to, to have to sit through my slow computer again. Okay, guys. Well, just like I said, uh, the well, the calculation finished, and we get two sun plots. Uh, one, one that you can see here. Oh, it actually looks like it might be in a different order for for interesting for for the uh, the humidity. I, I yeah. So so right now it's saying. Oh no, it's actually it's applied correctly. So our dry bulb temperature is greater than 12, and relative humidity is greater than 50. Um, and so, well, I mean, actually, I guess before we had we had put in a conditional statement that was a bit, you know, a bit hotter. So these aren't necessarily all suns that we really want to shade too much. But you guys can get the sense that you can make very custom sun plots where, you know, where you've now taken out all the suns that do not fit this conditional statement. So maybe in, maybe a more appropriate one would have been like A is greater than like 24 or something, where, where you definitely, definitely need shade by that point. Because maybe at 12 you might still want it. Um, but yeah, but you get a sense, and you get to two legends, and you get you get something that is telling you what is going on. Um, and and importantly, now you also get sun vectors for that. So these might be, you know, in in the you know in a slightly different conditional statement, these would be sun vectors for the condition that you want to shade. And now those are important for for uh, components later that you can use to actually generate shades from these sun vectors. But well, I won't go into that now. In the meantime, you guys have gotten a pretty good understanding now. You've, you've now been in, you know, exposed to these things in two components, things like, like conditional statements and annual hourly data. And I should say that these things now, like almost all the visualized weather data components have these. And in the next few videos, we're going to, we're going to see those same properties on, on a couple of other components so that you guys are really ready to start playing around with this more. Um, but in any case, that, that, this is going to sum up this video, and I thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll, I'll hopefully see you in the next one where we'll look at the windrows.